Hey everyone, um, this is everything you need to know about the Virtual Wax Museum. So um, I put some pictures here from our students from last year, so I hope it gives you a little bit more of an idea on what to expect. Um, in, this, in these slides, um, everything including what a Virtual Wax Museum is, what the expectations and due dates are, some helpful notes to help you as you do this, and then a final checklist, which you will use at the end of the project. Um, Everything in here is super helpful and you will definitely be going back and forth to this. Um, I'm going to be putting this into Google Classroom. Um, it's going to be under um, wax, uh, Virtual Wax Museum under Classwork, okay? So let's go through it. No, it's hard to see with my face here. I'm going to so what is a virtual wax museum? So finally, it's the moment that you've been waiting all year for the fourth grade live wax museum. Unfortunately, we won't be able to have our live wax museum, but we are going to be able to make this happen virtually. I already discussed in my other directions, but when we were choosing our historical person to do our project on, that we're going to be using Flipgrid and a, um, a Padlet to be sharing our videos with um, with people that want to see and learn more from, from us. So a virtual X museum, each of you will choose a person who has made a positive contribution to history um, in order to do an awesome and exciting virtual wax museum project. You're going to be creating informative slides, which I will get into in a minute, and then a strong speech to make your historical figure come to life. We will be recording our speeches dressed as our historical figures and then sharing them through Padlet, which everyone can access and learn from you. Okay, so the expectations. So first thing is you're choosing a, a historical figure and then doing research about them. So I'm gonna share some websites that would be very helpful for you um, to find out important information that will be good for your speech and for your video and for your slides. Um, in your slides, you're going to have important information about, you know, their childhood, their middle years, their later years. Sometimes um, we have to tweak it a little bit based on who you're doing because some people have died and then some people are still alive. So we have to tweak little things, um, but you're going to come up with many facts about this person. Um, you're going to prepare an informational speech that you will present in a Flipgrid video. So the speech we will be making together, I will give you a template to follow and then you just kind of make it your own and make it um, make your character come to life. So then we're going to record and upload our videos to the Virtual Wax Museum on Padlet using Flipgrid videos. And um, don't forget that you have to dress up as your character for the Virtual Wax Museum. So you don't have to go crazy, you know, finding outfits because I'm sure you can find something that you can use um, with things that you already have at home. OK. <clears throat> So here is the most important slide, slide number three, the due date. I'm taking the due dates very, very seriously because I want to make sure that um, that we get this done in time for the ending of the fourth marking period. And I want to make sure that everybody, you know, follows along and is working really, really hard on this. Um, it is a big part of your grade for the fourth marking period. So I would not take this lightly at all. Um, so we're going to break up the slides so that you don't have to do it all at once. Um, so information's slides one to four that will be due friday may 8th to uh, 2020 at 8 p.m slides four through seven will be due the following friday may 15th 8 p.m the final written speech will be done may tw uh, 22nd that would, that's when it would be due um, you have to i'm giving you one week to memorize your speech um, no one can be using any you know uh, like cards or index cards during their recording day. So I really want you guys to try to memorize your speech. It won't be too, too, too bad. Just practice, you know, in front of, in front of people or stuffed animals or whatever, or in front of the mirror that helps too. But you have to have your speech memorized by Friday, May 29th. And then you still have that weekend to keep practicing because that Monday when we come back is going to be our recording day and you must be dressed as your character on this day. So we're going to be recording during our ELA time. Okay, you'll have the entire class day that day to record your video. Um, if you you know mess up one time, you need to do it again or a couple times. That's fine. But by the end of ELA time, that video has to be ready to share with the world. Okay. And then that Friday of that same week is our virtual Wax Museum release day. So that's when I would send out the Padlet to our school and all the people at school and um, send it out to your families. And then your families can send it out to um, 
friends or, or other families and relatives so that they can see you, you know, put on your, your speech and performance. So um, this is all going to happen during ELA time. Yes, you're probably going to have to work a little bit more on this outside of remote learning time. Um, so maybe just, you know, keep yourself organized, try to set yourself some time, maybe, um, you know, once you, we finish the day together at 1230, um, then you can use, you know, until one o'clock or 130 to finish any wax museum stuff that might be due because it's so important and it's such a big project. I don't want to see anybody do poorly on this. And it's supposed to be, you know, fun and exciting. And, and I really want you to learn about someone new that you may have not known about um, before this. <clears throat> so I tried to give everybody the pick that they want, by the way. Um, I think I pretty much got everyone's like first or second choice, which is really, really cool. Okay. So these are the helpful notes, which I will show you for the slides. So slide number two, and I'm going to open that one for you as well. So these are the slides that you're going to be um, filling out. So the cover slide, this is where you're going to, of course, like write the name of the person, you're going to write your name, and then you can kind of like decorate the cover slide however you want, um, put some pictures of the person, um, don't put pictures that are not related to the person or the topic. So for example, if I'm doing Michael Phelps, then I might, you know, put a swimming pool or I might put, you know, goggles, a picture of goggles on there. That all makes sense. But am I going to put, you know, a baseball bat on there? Probably not because Michael Phelps is known for his swimming career. Um, then slide number two is um, early childhood. So as you can see, I put three bullet points already for you. And what you can do is you can open up these expectation and due date information. And you can see what is um, what does that mean to have uh, three facts about early childhood. Well, let me take a look. Um, early childhood, and, oops, oops, there we go. Information like when and where they were born, what was their family like, what did the person learn as they were growing up, or were there any other um, important early childhood facts you can go there. So I wrote down over here also there has to be three facts. Not two, not five, three, okay? If you really, really want to put one more, I'm okay with that, but it needs to be minimum of three. Um, information slide number three, same thing, middle years. Um, information like failures or struggles that this person had before he or she was successful, accomplishments or anything else you'd like to add about their middle years. So this is mostly about kind of like building up to when they became a famous historical figure in history. So this is um, pretty much like um, I would say like maybe like college time, uh, kind of self-discovering themselves too. And then for later years in slide four, information like their main accomplishment or accomplishments that affected the world or anything else you would like to add about their later years. This would be why they are famous. What are they famous for usually? Um, why are they so important and why do we still um, study them and learn about them today in history? Okay, and then slide number five is interesting facts. Information like awards, achievements, or any other facts that are not listed. So this is more of like a fun fact kind of thing. Like, oh, you know, Michael Phelps likes to eat cheeseburgers. Like that would be kind of like an interesting fact about him. So it doesn't really have to be related to what this person is famous for. It can be um, anything, anything else that's just interesting about them. And then finally, in the last slide, I have a final checklist for you. This is pretty much like when you're all done, ready to record on recording day, to make sure that you have everything else that you need to complete. So while you're doing your project, I want you to go through this checklist too, because it'll be helpful. So chose a person for the Wax Museum. So pretty much today, everybody will be able to check that one off. You're already ahead of the game. Um, I took notes while I was researching. It might be really good to use your ELA notebook to take some notes while you're looking up um, your research. Three facts about the person's childhood, the middle years, later years, and interesting facts. I have my Google Slides prepared. Now the slides, you can also, you know, make them your own. I'll explain that in a minute, what I mean by that. Um, I have practiced my speech presentation in front of someone at least three times a day. Um, I have a costume prepared for the live wax museum, or I should, it's really for the virtual wax museum. 
Um, and then I recorded my video in Flipgrid. I turned in my slides for grading, and then I shared the Padlet link with my friends and family. So um, I had some pictures over here of students from last year. Of course, like we're not doing the, the big pro, uh, poster board, but these slides are gonna be helpful for um, like a virtual uh, poster board almost. So let me show you, go back here. So like I said, really years, later years, interesting fact. So it looks very plain right now. Um, like I said, you can make this your own. So you can change the font, you can change the color. Don't make it so that no one can read it. I'm trying to make it that you know people can still understand what you're writing. You want to revise and you want to edit. Make sure that you have no um, grammar mistakes because this is something that's going to be shared with not only our classmates, but like with the school, with your friends, with your family. So you want to make sure that it's like top notch, ready to go. In slide number six, um, there's a video section. So um, I want you all to go on YouTube and find a cool video about your person. Okay, so if I'm doing Michael Phelps, um, what I would do is I would go insert video. Oops. And I would kind of see like what kinds of videos that they have. So of course you want to watch it to make sure that um, your video is appropriate for school audiences. Um, I'm going to put this one in. So I'm going to delete this back here. And that way, you know, someone can go in there and not only did they watch your video, but they also um, were able to see someone else's video too about that. And then finally, like the last slide um, is your thank you slide. So this is where you would thank um, your like people for coming and like looking at your information, watching your video. You could say, have a nice day. You could say, thanks for stopping by. Hope everyone's safe. You know, whatever you want to put in your thank you slide, make it your own as well. So it's pretty much what it is. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think that you guys are going to enjoy it, even though it's virtually, it's a little different, but I think it's going to be very cool. So if you have any questions or concerns, um, I did share with your families, my YouTube uh, channel, um, my email. I have most of them on Remind. We're going to talk about this too during our Zoom meeting today. Um, if you don't know what that is, then talk to your parents so that they can get on there and they can see and we can talk about the Wax Museum a little bit further too. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really cool. I hope you guys um, enjoy it. We're going to chat. Um, what I was going to say really quick now that I remember. Um, we will be working on Wednesdays. I'm going to give you time on Wednesdays to work on Wax Museum stuff. Um, we can call it, you know, Wax Museum Wednesdays if you want. But for the most part, you're doing this on your own. So watch the due dates. Make sure that you're keeping yourself accountable and make sure that you're pushing yourself to give your overall best in this. OK, this is supposed to be fun and engaging. I'm really excited to see uh, you guys all dressed up as your character and see what videos and speeches that you come up with. We will be working, though, together during the week, a little bit here and there, but mostly on Wednesdays. So make sure that you are prepared and ready and we'll be good. All right. See ya.